welcome back. And we're moving into our second conversation for today uh, as we talk about Belize's upcoming presidency of the pro tempore, uh, presidency pro tempore of SICA, Central American Integration System. We have with us on set His Excellency Pat Andrews, who is the Chief Executive Officer for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And we also have Orla Canton Coleman, who is the Director of International Affairs and Cooperation. Good morning. Good Welcome. morning. Good morning. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you very much for inviting us. Thank you, too, for being here. Of course, we know uh, before all the uh, work starts in a few days, um, all the preparation is, is being made for this particular um, period of time. And it's a great time for us to talk once again about this very important topic of integration. And uh, let's just start with what be assuming the presidency means for Belize, and especially at this time. So as I was mentioning to you, Maleni, the last, Maleni, the last time we were PPT, mm -hmm. President uh, Pro Tempore, uh, was in 2014. Since then, we've had a chance to work close with SICA but more than anything else to basically learn better how to basically uh, lead as we face July 1st. Mm -hmm. uh, and for example, you know, uh, traditionally SICA has used the, the modem of having uh, countries who were past uh, presidency, uh, the current presidency and the incoming uh, under the system of uh, uh, under the system of the oh yeah the troika yes under the system of troika to be able to uh, uh, you know to be able to discuss and to be able to lead lead the the, the Central American countries in a deeper integration. Yes. So as Dominican Republic had it during the past uh, uh, semester, uh, January to July, we have been very involved with them as part of the management team and so yeah. on. So we've learned quite a bit and I think that as we speak now come July 1st, it positions Belize to be leading the way and the, the truth of the matter is that many countries are looking to us to really be able to shake up things a bit. Yeah. Uh, we are cautiously looking at definitely the, 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 the theme being the bridge between SICA and CARICOM, right? This has been talked about for a long time, mm -hmm. right? And I'm, I'm sure you remember. So the, 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 the task that we're going to have in hand is to be able to make sure that now we execute on that. We execute on that. Can I go back a little? What yes. does SICA do? do? What, does, what does it do? SICA, SICA is, is a, an integration, a Central American integration system made up of a, a five, five countries. A, and really, you know, they have five pillars uh, that includes uh, climate change and disaster risk management, democratic security, economic in integration, social inclusion and poverty alleviation, and institutional strengthening. So really what they are trying to do is in Central America, trying to see how these countries can work hand in hand and be able to move the economy, be able to move security issues that they have within their own countries to a higher level. So that's what they have been doing, and really, uh, uh, Kevin, as you know, integration takes a little while to catch hold of, and this is where I think we will have to basically see how we can lead the way in trying to make things different. Now, it's interesting because integration, I think, has become, the conversation about integration has changed so much. Um, you know, where it used to be the ideal, and we used to look at, at the European Union and, Union and say, this is why we need to be uh, more integrated. Now we're seeing things like Brexit, where countries are saying, well, I don't know if integration really works for me. In CARICOM, for example, there's conversation about the effectiveness of CSME. Mm -hmm. um, and when we look at Central American region, I feel that it perhaps while there has been ongoing work with SICA for so long, mm -hmm. it's where we feel the integration the least. Um, many have said it's because of the language barrier um, and cultural barriers. But from your perspective, obviously, when you, and you have your, your um, direct involvement, you're able to see things from a different perspective because you know the groundwork that's happening. Where have we seen uh, the effects of integration with Belize and Central America? Um, over the years that we've been involved. Go ahead. Well, 
um, <coughs> to me, there's a direct visible one because of our position within Central America, geographically speaking, uh, when it comes to movement of persons. Um, for one thing, I know that uh, SICA countries had agreed, for example, to allow um, citizens of these Central American countries, of SICA countries, to move without visas for 30 days, and that's throughout um, the region, Central America. Um, I also am aware as well that when it comes to certain initiatives, for example, with security as well, um, we have sought as much as possible to have possible positions when it comes to dealing with things such as um, citizen security, um, the issue of the of the of the, the crime and violence that's plaguing all of the regions, the mm -hmm. issue of the illicit trafficking in drugs. Um, we where as and as I have said, it's where it's possible to have common positions because in some instances, because of where we also belong in CARICOM, there may be some slight divergences. Yeah. Um, I know there's also one area that's really lacking, and we've spoken about it a number of times, and it has to do with the trade and investment component, uh, because you know we're not a part of the economic integration arm of SICA, which is the SICA, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and there's a lot of reasons why, but if you take away the reasons why, you know that there is this natural um, trust for, for, for integrating more on an economic and trade basis yeah. with the partners of, of Central America. Um, but we have to take it, I don't want to say slow, but we have to take a very studied approach to it as much as um, the forces are pointing you towards your neighbors yeah. uh, because of our obligations within CARICOM. And that's certainly one of the areas that the Ministry of Trade has signaled to us that they would like for us to put back on the, on the agenda for this uh, during this six months. There's already a substantial amount of trade that takes place with Central exactly. America. And, and yeah. this, this is the point. This is the point that we already have mm -hmm. quite a bit of trade happening. So what we need to do is formalize it mm -hmm. and to really be able to look at that area where it's a natural for us. We have uh, the transportation that would be much easier mm -hmm. for us to be able to do. But more than that, you know, I believe that, you know, the, the opportunities are there for mm -hmm. farmers to to grow more corn and more beans mm -hmm. to sell into Central America and the cattle sweep that's doing so well, formalizing that sort of a thing. So even as we go looking at the possibility of one of these days being part of SECA, it will be something that we can't wait for too long to get into. That now, place. before we, we move any further, I think one of the things that we have to discuss is looking at integration with Central America and the ongoing territorial dispute between Belize and Guatemala. And I think where we have spoken about SICA many times before, with this issue on the forefront of Belizeans' minds, we have to be able to, to, to explain how integrating with Central America works when our very own neighbor, our closest neighbor, <laughs> is, has a claim, an unfounded claim over a country. How does this fit into the integration process? Well, you know, uh, we have to, whichever way you want to paint it, understand that the claim is something that we have to deal with, yet at the same time, economic integration, economic development between Guatemala and Belize is a natural and it will have to continue being uh, supported. Mm -hmm. has, it has to be supported. So I, I believe that even in, in, in our communication with SICA and with Guatemala being a part of it, we have seen them to be very, very uh, cooperative, very open, and so that dialogue has to continue as we continue remaining with our position and they continue with their position mm -hmm. uh, 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 regarding the referendum. So I, 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 I sincerely believe that we have to keep the two things them in proper balance mm -hmm. and move forward. Well, what is SICA's position on, on the uh, unfound, unfounded yeah. claim? Well, you know, uh, SICA, I, th I don't think that they have formally declared themselves, but each country has their position. Mm -hmm. And I believe that uh, I wouldn't want to go into that area right now, but I can rest assured, UK, you can rest assured that uh, we have countries that definitely understand our, our situation. But this is, this is a body where one of the pillars, as you told us, is democratic security. Yes. So that has to be a position that is discussed and somehow dealt with because it, there is a threat to the democratic security of the region if things don't go exactly 
according to the way things are planned. It is, and, and basically you would have comments uh, and positions made by Guatemala where they had their recent referendum and, and they were uh, basically commended for that. And our situation about us having de uh, 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 decided on a date for our referendum, April 10, 2019, uh, was also commended by the mem members of SICA. So in, in that way, we keep things moving forward. Is, is it uh, a practice of what we see in other international uh, organizations where simply the countries say, we hope you resolve this issue, you two a countries? Punctuous, a punctuous ballot sort of approach. Well, you know, again, yes, it, 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 it is something that definitely not only them, but other countries, including the UN, would say that we have to basically meet and to resolve the situation. And this is what we, where we are involved with. That's why it's so important for all of us to be on the same page. Will there be any benefit of us taking up this presidency in relation to that issue? There will be. Democratic security? There will be. Because, and what would it be? You know, I think that the underlying benefit for us will be Belize, being as small as we are, being able to, with the support that we have in foreign affairs, uh, in our team to be able to lead and to be able to plan as we are right now. Last week, a couple of few weeks, we have been talking to all the ministries, mm -hmm. all the CEOs, telling them what our plans are, telling them what the, what the plans, the action plan was on the table right now, trying to build on what the Dominican Republic was doing mm -hmm. and to definitely be able to then set the stage for meeting with the Secretariat will be coming to Belize to meet with all the ministries again to be able to get our plan all discussed and brought into. We are going to have our agenda for Belize to see what all Belize wants to take out of uh, this presidency. But more important, we're also looking at the region of in being able to see what we'll be able, be able to offer to them as we go preparing, as we go preparing and continuing to work on the action plan preparing uh, with the uh, meetings that we might have, SICA Taiwan, SICA India, that have been very successful mm -hmm. with us in the past, being able to revisit those and be able to make uh, an impact for the mm -hmm. countries. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I wanted to bring it to another issue. And I, you know, I understand that uh, we, we have to be able to explain to Belizeans just, as I mentioned before, integrating with Central America and how that fits into the Belize-Guatemala relations. But moving forward, there's, there's an issue, uh, I think, that has plagued Central America and is usually a part of not just a SICA conversation, but OAS. And that's talking about drug trafficking and sometimes the uh, implications that's given to the, the Americas, this region of the Americas, um, based on, on, on how drugs are trafficked through. And I know where there have been uh, recommendations for different stances to be taken, especially against or, or northern um, mm -hmm. friends. What's the conversation like now at SICA when it comes to drug trafficking and some of the issues that we're facing in this area? Look, it has been no secret that the threat that we face is a threat primarily from the northern triangle. Mm -hmm. And this discussion uh, we have had within the OAS, and uh, when we have an opportunity to talk to the State Department, we raise it with them also, okay. uh, because it's something that uh, will, is affecting us directly. And so, you know, it's something that we talk about all the time, it's something that we focus on all the time. And so, just to talk about the benefits that we can get out of SICA, as we go talking to the Central American countries, uh, not only the ones then that form part of the Northern Triangle, but all of them uh, to know that basically all of us are facing the same threat, as is CARICOM facing the same threat. And looking at this commonality and being able to understand that it's something that our friends to the North will have to pay attention to it because yeah. eventually it will flow into them, into their area too. So uh, it's something that we, I'm, I'm sure that we have to continue to to work, work with very closely, and uh, all of us have to do our part. Yeah, yeah. Are there any new suggestions or new strategies that are being developed by the technical teams in how we can approach unitedly? Because that, that's the benefit of integration. Rather than Belize saying, like we saw with our Attorney General saying, well, show me the proof. Um, uh, what, what is the, the region saying 
about uh, sometimes what are unfair, what, what is seen as unfair practices or limitations being put on this region um, because of the drug trade that continues to happen? Well, <coughs> that's a very specific question. Yeah. But in terms of global approaches, um, I'll refer to what TR has recently done. Mm -hmm. um, it has approached CARICOM to, to engage CARICOM and SICA member states to address this very issue of security. Um, th and, and I mean, the idea is quite um, obvious that what we're trying to do here is to, is to, is to have the two sub-regions um, come up with common positions to dealing with the threats of, 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 of drug trafficking and every yeah. other thing else that comes under the component of um, citizen secu of security. Mm -hmm. um, but for me to tell you uh, specifically, well, this and that, um, on fr fortunately, you'll get another opportunity to speak with the persons from the Ministry of, 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 of Home Affairs, mm -hmm. is it now? Yeah, and, and, and I don't want to try and make up something that I'm not fully yeah. um, aware of, but I can tell you that, that clearly um, this is an issue that, that, that is of import to both sub-regions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we, in fact, um, under the DR's presidency, a uh, memorandum of understanding was signed between CARICOM and SICA, mm -hmm. and in fact, it will also factor on our agenda for this PPP where we want to see how we can actively implement some of the um, activities that are outlined in the security MOU. Yeah. You said that, uh, but you said that there are certain things that people are looking forward to us um, in this president, in this term, mm -hmm. the shake of things. Mm -hmm. Could you give us a uh, foreshadowing of what some of those things that we are going to shake up in mm -hmm. this term? Well, you know, as Marlene mentioned, the, the thing about integration is difficult and each country thinking its own thing, uh, basically being able to take care of their own or thinking about their own backyard and so mm -hmm. on. So I believe, Kevin, what we intend to do is trying to see how we, by talking to, to the, the membership, let them understand how important it is to basically put all of these things behind us. Uh, it, is, it is easier said than done because I know we all have our own peculiarities, all our own objectives. But uh, shaking things up would mean that basically really being able to agree on a plan and being able to execute it. Uh, sometimes that is where things get bogged down and because of, because of one, one's thinking, uh, things don't move forward. We will have to try and see how we can peel back the onion and try to get things moving. That is what I can say. At this can point. I ask another question, though, which is bothering me? Yeah. Um, are we being, oh, this flip question to what Marlene asked, are we being over ambitious? Belize has a lot on its plate yeah. in the next year. Yes. Yeah. And uh, when you say the presidency, mm. Belize takes it on, but it's going to be our Minister of Foreign Affairs, yes. I understand. It's yes. going to be of in, course. The, in the hot seat. Of course. Of as course. well as one of our major international um, diplomats, I could call him. Alexis Rosado. Rosado, yes. They already have the gargantuan task, yes. to borrow my daughter's term, yes. of dealing with the differendum and of preparing for um, the referendum next year yes. to get us ready if we have a yes or a no vote. Indeed. Are we being too ambitious to take it on? Should we have said, listen, man, you know right now, I've <laughs> got a lot on the plate. Yeah. So you know, yes. We're yeah. going to pass. Let's probably to take it. K Kevin, Kevin, yes, we could have done that. But you know, deep down, we believe that whilst we take care of the preparation and the public awareness campaign for the referendum coming up next year, life continues. Mm -hmm. And we have to basically take care of ourselves. We have to continue taking care of the country. And this is not something that we've just taken on to this membership of SICA. We joined in 2000 and 2003, was it? Or yeah. 2000, somewhere around there. Yeah. So we've been in it for a while. So yes, we could have said, let's hold off till next time. Let's defer. But I think kind of busy right now. I, I, I Call think back. that you know, after Belize, Guatemala takes over. Mm -hmm. Okay, in January, Guatemala takes over. So maybe put it. Let's put it that we want to set the stage mm -hmm. for things to continue, and it'll be during the same time when we are going to referendum. So that's an interesting perspective there now. Yeah. <laughs> In, in taking the lead first. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. 
You know, there's a lot. <laughs> it's interesting because we don't, and even we as the media, we're guilty. Um, we don't look a lot as to what's happening in Central America. We'll talk more about what's happening in Barbados than what's happening in Nicaragua. Yeah. And what's happening are, I mean, there are major issues in Central America right now. And, and, and you know, you spoke of, of putting aside um, what is taking place, but can you do that? When, mm -hmm. when, when you come together as a Central American region, this, this, this small con but very powerful connection between North America and South America, how do we, as, as, as Central America, come to the table with all our baggages? Yeah. Um, you know, Belize with our issues, Guatemala recovering from, from their yeah. disaster, yeah. Nicaragua, which yeah. we really yeah. need to talk about Nicaragua yes, more. Indeed, indeed. Um, how do you come to the table and talk about, let's, let's do things together, but we really have so much work to do at home. Belize yeah. is not the only one who, should, who can say at <laughs> no. this point, call me back later. Yeah. In fact, I think most Central American countries can right now. Indeed, and so because of the same reason why we just can't close our eyes to some of those other problems is the reason why we need to sit down and try to, try to have a meeting of minds. Yeah. Have a meeting of minds and be able to discuss these things whilst uh, Guatemala is recovering from its uh, uh, oh, volcano. Yeah eruption and whilst Nicaragua is starting to have some of the challenges, all things that are in our backyard and things that we have to basically so, uh, address. So what is the benefit? What is, what is, would you say is a primary benefit? And I don't mean the overall uh, of objectives of Zika. I mean in today's society, in 2018, with all the individual challenges of the countries, what is the benefit of this time Belize getting the leaders of Central America to say together, all right, we have a plan, uh, step one, two, three, to really strengthen our own position. Uh, really, in my mind, I think it is the fact that by doing that, we will be able to set the stage, hopefully, mm -hmm. for a more united SICA, and a SICA that will be able to see and share best practices with CARICOM, of which we are a member too, and be able to then really uh, 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 be, uh, that bridge. be that bridge, be that bridge really. This is why we have our, our ribbon to the top. That's why we have that ribbon to the top. Coming out from Belize, of course. Indeed, and coming up from a small little Belize. And going into the that. zero, actually. And, yeah, exactly. 2018. Exactly so, exactly so. Yeah. But can, can I ask this too? <coughs> Can't serve two masses at the same time. And I hear the political rhetoric, and it sounds nice, it's very idealistic, that we're a bridge. Mm -hmm. But there are certain areas where it's, there are going to be some inconsistencies, there are going to be some conflicts between where we traditionally have identified ourselves economically. We are seeing that with the markets, with CARICOM, and not, I don't know how we're going to be president and not sign on to a major part of that, of SICA, mm -hmm. but that's something that I guess the technocrats it, understand it will, more than it'll I can. It will come down the road. Yeah. But surely, there are some areas where there is, we're going to have to choose either God or Mammon, where the issues and the benefits of CARICOM or the requirements of CARICOM are going to be completely inconsistent with our participation in SICA. How do we choose? You know, the thing is that basically the ideal situation is for us to be able to see, for Belize, what is good for us on this side here and what is good for us on the other side. And there'll be things that we choose that by us being able to again talk to the people in CARICOM about what we are doing with uh, Salvador and Guatemala and Honduras in, in exporting cattle or, or, or corn or what have you, that they will also be able to do the same thing as we are right now exporting grains to Trinidad or to Jamaica and so on. So that's what we want to start that little sort of activity. Sometimes, Kevin, it looks a little bit daunting, and it probably is, but we have to start to chip away. If I may, it's, <coughs> it's, uh, I know we will inevitably come to that, mm -hmm. having to make Impasse. that decision. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but at least for right now, we have the luxury of, 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 of trying to get the best of both worlds, no? Um, and, and like I said, we're not at that point where we have to choose, but I am sure that, um, in fact, I think that is one of the reasons why, for example, we have not 
yet decided to join the economic arm of Central America because yeah. it might not have direct conflicts, but there may be some inconsistencies with our obligations under CARICOM vis-a-vis -vis -vis what we will undertake mm -hmm. with SECA. But we're taking a measured approach to it, and, and I guess it's something that we will eventually have to um, um, cross when we get there, no? How do we ensure, you know, we, we've been speaking, obviously long before I've been born, but I've been hearing it so long, about being the bridge between Belize and Central America. And uh, we know that definitely our Central American counterparts are looking at how we can use Belize as this bridge to get into CARICOM, but it still has been so uh, difficult to come to some tangible um, structure. W what are some of the barriers that we're seeing? I know CARICOM wants to welcome Central America the same way, and how do we not miss the opportunity. I mean, Panama is pretty close too, you know, mm -hmm. they, they can jump over to the lower islands yeah. and, nope. and try to get things started mm -hmm. there. And they have, uh, let's face it, they have the, the development structures to be able to do it. How do no. we not miss the boat no, on well, this you, opportunity? You have hit the nail on the head because believe me, they have countries, Jamaica, Trinidad already, who are mm -hmm. doing their things directly. Mm -hmm. So it's not anything that we are gonna be thinking that we are gonna be creating a new thing for CARICOM or Central America. We're gonna be wanting to continue facilitating it and trying to deepen uh, the integration process. But uh, apart from that, it's already starting. Yeah. So it's, it, 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 it is here, it is here. And again, it is here whilst we being part of SICA and being part of CARICOM will be able to also be careful not to be left behind. Yeah. Are, we, are we doing anything uh, structurally? Because it's there are two there are two two forces operating, and we call ourselves the bridge. You now the amount of traffic I see going on, and it's like the it's like the Halova Bridge right now. If you ask me, it's kind of very narrow. We we cannot. What we have institutionally, I don't know what we have, but I would guess that what we have institutionally cannot support where we want to go. Be able to accommodate both CARICOM and SICA, especially in terms of economic activity. Yeah. What move are we making to be able to exploit? Because I, I guess what we want is we want to be able to say we are going to channel everything out of CARICOM into SICA yeah. and from out of SICA into CARICOM, mm -hmm. which will give us tremendous benefit, I, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. But are we institutionally doing anything? Have we doubled to formalize, to formalize it? it? But not only to formalize it, mm -hmm. but also to create the capacity to be able to do it, to exploit it. We have to do some work there. I think that we have to do some work there. And it won't be something that will be happening you know, from night to day. <laughs> it will be a process, right, okay? But again, Kevin, believe me, we need to talk, we have to talk that language. We need to be, be able to sit down with our colleagues in, 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 in the CEO caucus and discuss this CEO. with the CEO. CEO. CEO caucus, where we meet with, uh, as a team, to discuss these oh, ministerially. issues. Ministerially? Yeah. Ministerially, okay. Yes, okay. the department, sorry about that, yeah. We need to talk about it and be able to get uh, uh, the government uh, in tune into being able to do that and start slowly and then, you know, expand. Right. expand. So we uh, take up the presidency at the end of June uh, for the next six months. What does that mean um, for, Bel for your Belizeans? Let's, let's talk to mm -hmm. Belizeans about this integration process. And as I said before, we don't really, I mean, I think people who have uh, migrated to Belize, they still stay in touch with home. But uh, on, a, on a larger scale, we don't talk as much um, about Central America and the integration process. So talk to us about what this presidency means for your average Belizean. What it means to us is that on June 30th, that is on Saturday, uh, they're having a summit in Santo Domingo mm -hmm. uh, where the official handover is going to take place. Yeah. So July 1st, Belize uh, takes over the PPT. Uh, we are, I mentioned to you before that we are having a meeting again with the ministries and the secretariat who are coming over here to prepare our plan of action. And thereafter, it'll be basically meetings that we're going to be hosting here in Belize for the countries them to come together and to agree the first meeting on a plan of action during our presidency and also be able to have executive committee, committees be able to, and technical people begin to 
chart out some of the mandates that we're going to be wanting to have come, come the end of our presidency. Mm -hmm. uh, it will mean that we're going to have an opportunity to be able to have a, a mixed commission summits here in Belize with good partners like Taiwan and India, where we'll definitely try to see how we can assist uh, 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 and move the process forward for SICA, mm -hmm. as well as basically be able to play a role where uh, some other multilateral agencies might look at Belize and say, listen, we've been trying to get a hold of getting together with SICA for a long time. We haven't. Can you do that for us? And we will try to do as much as we can, mindful of your point, Kevin, that we can't do <laughs> too, too much. We can't take too much on our plate. Can't no? stretch too you can't stretch the way. You can't. But but trying to trying to see if we can at least start the process and let, let it keep on expanding and, and and the final thing for me is okay. um, six months is not a lot of time. The way how no 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 the, true. The, the way the, the way how um, red tape and technocrats yes, go. Indeed, indeed. You have three months of formalities indeed. where you have ceremonies indeed. and indeed. talkings and indeed. meetings. Nothing happens, and then you have two months of putting things on paper, and then your time up. Yeah, yeah. Um, what in terms of priorities? When we start off, what is the priority? Not priorities, because six months is not a lot of time. Yeah. That when we come to the end of our term, we can say we achieved this. Yes. What is that one thing that, when we have this conversation again, yeah. Mr. Pat, you'll be able to tell me, yeah. Kevin, yeah. I can successfully tell you we've accomplished that. Yeah, yeah. What is that? We're looking at security, right? We're looking at security. We're looking at trade. We're looking at health and tourism. Those a lot of things, man. We can do a lot wait, of things. I'm, I'm saying we have those four <laughs> things, four things that we, wanted to, we want to basically focus on, right? Between now and I would say the next week, mm -hmm. we're meeting with the ministers again to try to narrow that down to two, three. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to be doing. So the next time you talk to us as MFA, we'll be talking to you about the big picture, yeah. but you're going to have the CEOs, agriculture, health, they will all want to come and tell you their story too. So we'll be ready. All right. Beth, thank you very much for coming in and talking about this with us this morning. All right? Thank you. We're going to go ahead and take a break. And when we come back, we'll be talking to the judges of KTV The Remix Season 2.